Exatamente, achei aqui. You know, in some way, I have had um, this concept in, in my mind, in the back of my mind for a number of years. Because I first heard the story that a person called John Newton wrote Amazing Grace when I was visiting Liverpool maybe 15, 16 years ago. And I found a cottage that had a plaque outside that said, here lived John Newton, the composer of Amazing Grace, the hymn. And I found that very strange because I thought, having sung the song most of my life, that it came from the Negro spiritual tradition. So the black experience, the black diaspora, solidarity experience is what I had assumed. I also knew that most people who sing it in the world think of it in that way, because we all sing it as a solidarity making uh, utensil, let's say. And at some point I thought, let me just read a bit more about it. And I found something called The Authentic Narrative written by John Newton, in which I discovered that he was a slave trader. He declared himself a scoundrel and a bad person. And so I thought, wow, that's a really interesting concept. And I'd been thinking about that for a while, and Jacobo called, um, having spoken to Manuela in Liverpool, and they jointly wanted to ask if I would present something for the Biennale. And I said, look, the thing I'd like to present is this idea of a piece of music that really has lived with many of us in the black, dis black diaspora for so long. Um, and its history is hidden, it's submerged. And I think there's something about bringing the history up, bringing those ghosts up, that I think pays tribute to the people who've gotten lost, the slaves who've gotten lost or traded, uh, the lives that have been changed forever. So I was thinking what, what I could put into the song, what I could des design and describe around the song, that would speak back to this monumental architecture. So the idea started to surface when I was on a visit here, um, just looking at the site, that we could recreate the ship. Well, maybe one of the ships that's, that traded slaves, maybe the Greyhound, the particular ship that Newton uh, was on when he left Brazil. Uh, so that was the thread that brought us here. But 
I'm bound was the blind. But now I see. I see. Amazing. I knew that I I wanted to work um, on this piece with voices who I knew shared the history of uh, the traumas of the black diaspora. So I knew that it had to be an entity that was unified in solidarity with this idea of uh, the black diaspora family. And I knew the people in Sao Paulo who work with that theme are legitimate affairs. Because I, I met them a number of years ago when they came and disrupted a performance that I was doing at Mitch SP. And we just expressed a desire to work with each other. And then they invited me to work with them to devise music for a production called Black Brecht. And when we did that piece, the, the videographer who was also um, managing the image mapping, the video mapping, was Bianca Turner. And so I discovered her work through the connection with Eugenio Lima and Legitimate Defesa. Legitima are energetic, they are loud, they are argumentative, and very proudly black in a, in a place in the world that still is figuring out how to speak in those terms of blackness and other. The beauty and the complexity of working in this space first is of course it defines what the project can be in performance. I don't have a space physically that is like this in Liverpool. The offer in Liverpool is to work at the cathedral, the Catholic cathedral, uh, and there's a platform there which I've gone to see and I know it reasonably well now. So I will have to reimagine how it shapes inside of a church going to the outside of the church with a public that is milling about. So parts of it will reflect some of how we worked. I will use some of the same vocal training methodology that I've used with Legitima Defesa, except that in Liverpool, I've um, requested formal choirs to join the singing. And we will be working it from score, which I've written, which is a disrupted score of the original. So it will sound a lot more church bound in the beginning and then I will make proposals that will shift and disrupt it in the middle. It will be much shorter. In Liverpool it will last about 20 minutes, the performance. Um, and then what we will bring back here is uh, elements of what we will have created in Liverpool, some of the design, some of the ideas in order to inform the installation. So it will exist subsequent to September. Um, here at the Biennale as a sound and visual installation, as well as in Liverpool as a sound and visual installation. There's a relationship, there's an historical relationship between Sao Paulo and Liverpool because of John Newton. John Newton has a, his conversion experience, um, which he assimilates to the conversion of Saul, who was the persecutor of Christians, who became Sao Paulo.
And Newton talks about himself in similar terms. So I was intrigued that he came to Sao Paulo. We're making it in Sao Paulo. And he's basing his conversion on Sao Paulo, who, who is the saint that, uh, that gives the name to the city. So I'm going to try and make these triangulating uh, moments appear in the installation as well.